Hello to all of my non-existent subscribers. This is going to be a DIY on the E92 on how to replace the ambient lighting with white instead of the everybody knows it and might be tired of it. Amber. First off, to get at the LEDs themselves, the little units live in here, the door skin has to come off. If you're not familiar with how to do that, I'm sure there are other tutorials out there. Um, remember, there's a T20 behind this. Don't just go reefing on it, yanking on the door, wondering why it doesn't come off. That's why, you idiot. Um, yeah, that's me. Pop the trim off, four of them, and then just pull. It's just a bunch of clips. Um, and then be careful to unplug all the wires without yanking them out on the back side of the door. Again, check some of the other vids for the front door panel. This video remote. won't spend too much time on it, but since I haven't done it yet, I'm gonna show what it takes to get the rear door skins off so you can get at the little LED module things. You need trim removal tool. You also need a T20 bit. Now, in this case, I've got it on an extension and an El Cheapo electronic ratchet, but with those two things, I should be able to get that off and then onto the bench so I can show you the next steps. Time for a time lapse. Back to normal time for this next section. So it's just clips. After you undo these two screws, this one's way back there. That's why the extension's necessary. Uh, undo those two and then just kind of pull, starting from down by the door sill, work your way up and then across. These get harder to pull, which is scary, but just pull them. It'll be fine. And then this tab seats up under there. Now there are how many things? One, two, three things to disconnect. One of them requires this pick, and that is a black multi-wire connection that plugs into a module that lives inside the door that controls that often malfunctioning seatbelt caddy. So what we've removed is that, uh, this, mostly brown wires are brown and gray, which uh, powers the light module we're talking about today. And then this is speaker stuff. Here's the rear door panel. Those are the scary clips along the top sill edge. This is some old felt tape that I applied to try to do away with squeaks, but this is the subject of the video. Uh, it's disconnected. I had to repair this one. That's why we've got this shitty, shitty job here. But I can show you what to do to safely get this off uh, with not no damage, but minuscule damage. Also, quick word while we're looking at this, bag of 50 of these things is like nine bucks on Amazon, get them. As you can see, even I squished that one because uh, I wasn't paying attention, but that makes the difference between squeaks and rattles. They come with foam donut things that help in mounting it correctly. So here's a close up of the area that we're gonna work on to get it off the door, the door card. Um, Behind this foam, you can start to see a fiber optic rod right there. It's plastic, it's brittle, and they're rare these days in 2021. I had to order, I think, this very one uh, when I got the idea and started thinking about this project over the winter sometime. Um, quick prop. Here is kind of a well, it's not empty right now. This, I guess this is a stock one that I pulled off. Um, this is what we're trying to get out of this clamp. Heat is your friend here. Um, softens up the plastic and you would pop it out of the sleeve towards us, towards the camera in that direction. Um, I said somewhat destructive, but it doesn't matter. Um, I've seen perhaps more thorough workers um, go to the time of releasing these clips in here um, one by one. I have elected to just break them off um, because they really don't do anything in my opinion with retention, keeping the LED emitter up up uh, against the um, fiber optic down in there. Uh, so for example, with this one, I've already gotten in there so it just pulls right out. Otherwise, 
Um, there are these barbs on the fiber optic rod and they lock in on these little uh, areas here that won't focus. Yeah, they lock in there. I just broke them off. Uh, another quick word, if you're using a pick tool, make sure to stab yourself in the finger a couple times and draw blood. Uh, the cars seem to respond better if they know you've hurt yourself. Next step, and speaking of stabbing yourself, uh, is to get that little PCB board out of these two pieces of black plastic. Um, here's the pick. Where do I start? I forgot on this thing. Start towards the front, and that's for sure. And it's asymmetrical. So there are sides with these little ramp things that pop up. Um, you start on that side because there are retention clips on the other side that seem to release better if you come at it from this side. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pry this up and out and do it backwards because camera. And let's see if I can stab myself. Viewership versus on-screen injury. Wonder how closely that's related. Okay, so those have released, those are up. Let's go to the other side. And I guess I'll just go in from the top. It's right on top of the tab, so scoot over a little bit. And then the rear popped loose. Now inside of here, um, these are important. They're these U-shaped cutouts that help apply pressure to seat the contacts that slice through the um, insulation but those, those won't come back into play until later. Um, okay, here's the PCB. Um, gotta get it out. Again, pick tool carefully. The only resistance you should encounter is on this side where there are metal uh, slicey things that, like I said, go into the wire, the power wires uh, servicing the board. Okay. So that's up. It is these little V shapes um, that then slice into the wire, which you can see there to actually get access to the power. That's all with this thing for now. Um, next step, this is very important, very complicated. What you have to do is get this white thing off. It's a surface mount LED, uh, very small. I don't know if you can tell um, how small, I'd say maybe three mils across, three or four, something like that. You have to heat it up and desolder it from the board uh, and then resolder on one of a different color. This is gonna be the factory amber color one. Uh, that tiny little pixel square looking thing in there, I think is the diode itself. Um, and then a new one's gotta come on. It uh, takes a lot of expertise to do, so exactly what I did was buy the cheapest, shittiest soldering iron from the internet, nearly screw up one of these things, and then ask for help. Um, just wasn't worth the time to invest in the equipment, the optical stuff, to really do this at a level that I wanted. So I worked with a local cell phone repair shop, and uh, they were able to knock out four of these in... I don't know, 15 minutes tops. That included sitting around BSing with the guy. Only cost a couple of bucks uh, and was able to outsource the difficult part. Okay, so the old one's out. The old PCB is here. It's out. Now, from the cell phone guy, he did this. It was pretty complicated. I was impressed with uh, all that the guy did. For instance, this green stuff is a varnish of some sort. He removed that with a solvent to get at the contacts. He kind of traced the circuit. It's more complicated than it, or excuse me, less complicated than it actually looks. Just like any other light bulb, if you've screwed around with electronics as a kid, you got each side of the voltage coming in and that's all you have to deal with. Um, if you're that good at soldering, good on you, but um, I had him do it. Weird thing that I noticed is even though this is a white LED, the lens itself is that um, pale yellow color. And you see this on a lot of um, white LEDs. I think white LEDs are actually a, a mixture of like blue and yellow somehow. Anyway, if you know what I'm talking about, I guess comment on it. 
Um, all right, so the next step is to, with that gone, get this in. And that centers, at least initially, on getting these lined up to where you don't have to press so hard to get it to seat again. If you can reuse the same grooves, there's a lot less crushing you have to do of this 10-year-old, potentially, piece of uh, crappy BMW plastic. Uh, so getting that in, it just kind of drops into place. I'm gonna try to look in from the back and kind of pull these back and forth to where I can feel when it's very close. And then just downward pressure. One side seated, that side dropped down. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Press a little more, the other side fell pretty slowly in, but now it is flush and more or less on plane um, coming from this direction. All that we gotta do now is get this little piece back on that we pried off. Uh, if you haven't stabbed yourself by this point, that's okay. Um, it'll happen, just give it time. And all I'm doing to seat this, get it back in, is press. Um, and the tabs haven't broken yet. One of these was really obnoxious and I did have to just kind of crush it together. Um, just tested the circuit and it works. If you choose to buy these things new, if for some reason you screw them up, I think they're like 18 bucks on FCP. What's next? I guess getting it back on the door. No, testing. Testing is next. This part is for testing it because you don't want to put it all on the door and screw it back on only to discover it doesn't freaking light up. So I have it plugged in um, mostly over there. There is a catch that is a pain in the ass to release unless you stab yourself again with the pick tool. Uh, so what we do is turn the car on to the state that you flash it in, which is, I guess, on, not accessory, not crank. And then you turn the parking lights on. And there you go. It works. Now if my car will shut up, I will shine it at the lens because maybe that looks cool. So yeah, it works. Despite thinking I'd only pressed it in partially, I did press this connector together enough to lock it. And if you're gonna be taking the door panels off, um, you should know about this. So stabbing accessory, um, roll the connection over and you're gonna see a cutout with this little square indentation in it. With the 90 degree pick tool, I found that if you press it in and then rotate it, you can not only release the tab that's sticking up through that window, but you can lever it backwards in that direction. Uh, so let's see what that looks like from too far away and on camera. Yeah, there you go. No. Let's do it this way. And look, it came unplugged. The thing left to do now is to, there's a little fiber optic rod. I don't know if you can see it flopping around in there. Where is my stabbing tool? Stabbing tool is also a pointer. Uh, so that's the, the fiber optic thing. Keep saying fiber optic. It's, it's just a very expensive little cylinder of plastic. Um, and then this has to go back on it. It's basically just uh, put the thing in the hole inside of the other hole. If you know what I'm saying, which is a normal Tuesday night for most of us BMW enthusiasts. Sideways orientation. Could have checked that, but it was by feel. There are still little tabs left in there. And yeah, I broke the tabs, but the front of the car is, let's see, that way. So maybe there'll come a day where my acceleration is so awesome this will just leap out but that day isn't today so i'm not worried about the retention tabs being broken um so that's why i made the choice that i made not saying it's the right one but that's what i did from here it's basically just um get the door back on the inside of the car use the or re plug up that connection there um the pick tool works well there too, and uh, speaker connection back in that seat where it came from as well. Um, that's pretty much it.